here we go. <clears throat> Caleb Samuels. I live in Branson, Missouri, and not far from my house. Oh, I've been to Branson in Branson a long time. Celebration City. It's been abandoned for over a decade now, having closed in 2008. It was themed after America in the 20th century. It was opened in the afternoon into the evening, with each operating day closing out with a laser and fireworks display. The park featured many rides, shows, and attractions, and its operating season ran from May until September. I think I remember September. hearing my dad talk about this I had been there several place, times with my family never as a kid, here. and when it closed down, we were all definitely saddened to hear. They tore down most, if not all, of the roller coasters before closing, but even still, to this day, most of the buildings still stand, and it's a little-known fact that it's kind of a very cool place to explore now, low-key. My friend, <laughs> who we all called bought Calvin, that area, was very on board with my idea of going to check it out. I asked him because he's a family friend and our families had been to the park together in the past. We drove over and parked in the Steak and Shake parking lot across the street since the parking lot to the theme park had obviously been closed off for a very long time. Forever. It was around 7 p.m. The sun was setting. We didn't want to go in broad daylight in fear of getting caught or running into other people. We brought a couple heavy-duty flashlights for when it would get dark. In the meantime, we could see just fine at first. We jogged across the street when no one was looking as we didn't want to be obvious about trespassing in the park. When no cars were coming, we cut into the grass and into the trees surrounding the property of the park. It was surprisingly easy to sneak into the park. In fact, it didn't even really feel like we were sneaking in at all. Not that I'm encouraging anyone to trespass. <laughs> Seeing all the old buildings and attractions I remembered from when I was a kid still standing in this now cold and empty setting was so eerie. It's like a part of my childhood was dead. One thing was for sure, though. <laughs> you we were the only people childhood. in this place. No other sounds but the crickets. We couldn't Jeez, even hear the traffic really? from outside. As we walked around, we realized so much was left behind. Yeah, it was clear that people just had been here since they closed, closed the writing and like... graffiti on the wall. But lots of props and such were still in place or behind the glass in buildings. Some of the buildings had broken glass, though, indicating people had broken in and explored some of them. As it got darker, we decided to crawl in through one of these windows to one of the buildings. Once inside, we realized it was the diner once called Last Chance Diner. It was dark inside, and admittedly creepy. The front door was closed, locked, and covered. There were oddly planks of wood and, I guess, other random debris and objects laying all around the dining space. The best I could describe it, it seemed like it was being used for storage. Like, things from outside were brought into there. Calvin was checking out the other side of the place. I yelled to him I'm checking out the bathroom. What, I wait, wait, why is it like food still in shit? It was a like, different the smell in here. Not possible to explain, but there were three stalls in here. And as soon as I got in there, like, it was like when they closing down, it was like, hey, people was eating, <laughs> customers eating, like, get the fuck out. <laughs> we, this place got to be closed by 7 p.m. Like, get out. <laughs> Just like, that's like shit you see where you, you hear about, like, oh, these people had to leave in a hurry, like uh, Chernobyl, where it said people left with food still on the table food in a refrigerator stuff like that you know clothes still on coat hangers it, but it's like this place just went out of business <laughs> and people came back to tear down certain parts of it and it was, I, that must best probably some stock footage he just threw it in. i was like that still like like somebody eating chili or some shit it's like why, why is the diet they still have food in some of the uh the plates and bowls <laughs> <laughs> the sound get out them, like, like something really small being dropped to the floor i said hello i had Shit, my flashlight on this so pitch black room that. all three stall doors were closed but something made a noise in there i held the bathroom door open with my foot then got on my knees and aimed the flashlight below one of the stalls and i saw a pair of shoes and legs i gasped and jumped then looked under the other two stalls and there was the same thing there were three pairs of shoes and legs visible under the stall door. Oh, shit. And one of them began to move as if they were getting down on their knees to look under the stall door. But I didn't stick around long enough to see their they face. They probably doing the same shit you don't. I was already out of the bathroom yelling for Calvin to leave. I climbed back out through the window, and he followed me, not asking questions till we were out but and away from the they didn't even try to hide, like, stand I on told the him about the three people in the stalls. He made a joke that they were taking a shit. But I knew that meant he didn't entirely believe me. I told him one of them was about to look under the stall, 
When I tried to explain the bizarre sight better to him, his expression changed to a more freaked out look. We clearly weren't alone there, and if those were just three friendly people also there exploring but just using the bathroom, I feel like they would have said something as I came in or definitely after I said hello in there. By the time we were out of the park and back to the car, it was pretty much pitch black out. We haven't returned there since. I don't have an explanation for what I saw. It was scary and weird and definitely switched the mood of what was otherwise a fun day. Could have been just homeless people who live in there. All of them taking the shit at the same time. I'm a 30-year-old woman living alone in a mid to lower income area. There's some crime in my town, but I don't live in a ghetto. Still, sometimes I do feel a little uncomfortable. I don't know a lot of my neighbors too well, other than my next door neighbors, who are both nice. The houses across the street are a different story. Man, those are nice spaces. I like knowing my neighbors because it makes me feel a little safer living alone. I'm a big scaredy cat, so my biggest fears of living alone came true when one night I was in bed trying to fall asleep. It was pretty late on a work night, past 11. I heard the leaves slightly crunching on the side of the house. Human or not, I couldn't tell. There are a lot of cats and raccoons walking around here at night. The following night, I was awoken to something outside my window like a singular crack or tap. It must have been the window frame. It was October, so I it still had the windows been. open for air. So I guess out of pure instincts, I said, who's there? I didn't hear anything after that. Who's I got there? up and lifted my blind, and no one was outside. There should be nobody. Two nights there in a row of this. Who's there? I was starting to think I was getting paranoid over the smallest things, like regular house noises. So I tried to fall back asleep, but that same night, I woke up again. This time to some scratching or scraping sound from the backyard. I heard it through the window. I got up from my bed and went out to the little living space by the back door. I heard the clicking louder now. It was right outside the sliding door. I turned on the light in the living space, and then the sound stopped. I went over to the sliding door, which is covered by a sliding curtain. I was so scared to pull it, expecting to see someone. But when I yanked it open like a band-aid, no one was there flicked on the backyard light and slid open the door. I was relieved to see no one out there, including raccoons or some other pests. I listened to the crickets for a minute, then heard something in my tiny yard. Something rustling in the bush. I looked at the bushes. They're too thick to really see anything, but they're definitely a good place for someone to hide. That sound wasn't a raccoon or possum. I didn't want to know what it was. Uh, I went back inside. I made sure everything uh, was locked. Damn, I, can't remember the name. I went back to my room and even locked my bedroom door. After about 10 minutes of laying in my bed, there was a knock at my front door this time. I was starting to freak out now. I ignored it and the stayed definitely in my bed. house noises. No one should be knocking this late at night. If it happened again, I'd call 911. It didn't happen again. I somehow fell asleep eventually after that. The next yeah, day, how? I went straight to Best Buy with my brother, and he helped me pick out a doorbell camera and a security camera set. He helped me install both of them. The doorbell camera in the front and the other cameras in the back, both in low-key spots. My brother also spent the night that night to make me feel better. He slept in the guest bedroom. We were both in our own beds trying to sleep when I got an alert on my phone, motion detected on my property. I opened the Ring app and I screamed because there was someone in the black and white video trying to pick the lock to the back door of my house. Oh, shit. I woke up my brother and showed him the video. And he burst out of the bed and without shoes or socks on ran out into the backyard ready to kill someone <laughs> but my scream chased the person away which we saw while playing the video back hey, my brother screamed dude outside the yard to never come back as loud as he could and undoubtedly the person trying to break in heard it we couldn't identify the man's face he had a hood over his head and was wearing all dark clothing but not in a single frame could we see his face he was also wearing gloves which meant he left no fingerprints we called the police, even knowing there wasn't much they could do. It just felt like we needed to have them come to keep a lookout. After that night, nothing similar ever happened again. Not to toot my own horn, but I am on the more attractive side. And what really scares me is the possibility that this was someone <laughs> to my who horn, but I am hot. a young single woman hot living alone in the house. It makes me wonder if it's possible that this was someone who lives on my street, one of my neighbors. I guess I'll never know. Apparently, some dudes, if you hit 30, you automatically are five. <laughs>
When my mom and dad divorced, my mom got two of the five houses that my dad owned. <coughs> my dad owns a very Damn. successful real estate company, so we have or had places basically everywhere. I'm 23 years old, so I really just stay wherever I want, but I usually stay at one of my mom's houses now because I'm closer with her. This was one of the many weeks that my mom was at our beach house, and I was alone at the main house. I'm used to having the house to myself more often than not. The setup in the main house is a kitchen, living room, and two bedrooms upstairs, and then the same thing on the first floor, and then a basement. My bedroom is in the upstairs. I mainly use the kitchen and living room up there too, while my mom uses the downstairs for herself. It's a nice setup. The house has three entrances, a front, back, and really? a side yeah, entrance. His base is all the side entrance house leads out to where all the garbage himself. cans and such are. Yeah, one whole I usually go out that door when taking out the trash. Anyway. The story really begins when I started noticing a lot of my clothes were missing. I'd call my mom any time this happened if she wasn't home, and asked if she'd moved anything out of my clothing baskets. Usually she'd say no, since we live in separate floors of the house. But even this couple of weeks that I was home alone, an extended period of time, I was noticing some of my favorite shirts were missing. My room is usually pretty messy, admittedly, but even after digging through everything, I couldn't find a bunch of specific pieces of clothing. It made no sense. I even resorted to checking my car and the downstairs in my mom's room. Nothing. I came up with the idea that maybe one of my friends or multiple friends took my clothes for whatever reason, or more realistically that they'd eventually just come up on their own. You had that many people in your that. house? When I'm alone, I sleep with the door cracked your open friends just take so your hear clothes. God forbid someone were trying to break in. I was watching a movie on my laptop when my bedroom door suddenly shut. It didn't slam, but it didn't exactly close softly either. I had the ceiling fan on and both windows, so I thought maybe it was a draft. It does sometimes happen. But then I heard something from outside my bedroom down in the hall. My reaction isn't exactly what most people would do while home alone. I got out of bed and ran to the door and opened it. The hallway light was off. I turned it on, then walked towards the living room, and there was no one sitting on the couch or anything nightmarish like that. I wasn't satisfied yet, though. I went downstairs to my mom's floor and looked around, in her room's kitchen and living room. But then I noticed the basement door ajar. The light switch for the basement is right atop the stairs. It's a string you pull down. I went down into the basement, a relatively unused basement. There's just a couch, TV, a few workout machines, and a small room with a punching bag down there. There's also four doors that lead to closets, and a smaller door you have to crouch down into to get into this little crawl space type closet. Neither my mom nor I really go down there at all. In the crawl space. I cut through my peripheral vision. The little door to the crawl they space closet in the crawl moved space. just a little bit. My heart literally dropped, but I approached it just a little bit. I stopped, and now felt like my heart just completely stopped as well, when an arm came out from the darkness of the little closet and pulled the door ever so lightly shut. Whoa. I quietly but quickly went back up the stairs, wanting to run and be out of this house. I called 911 first thing and reported that there was a stranger in my house. Thank God I was quiet about leaving the basement and didn't give away the fact that I saw. The police showed up with their lights on, but not their sirens. All four of them came down to the basement with me, and they ordered the person in the closet out. The door slowly opened, and there was a bald, 50-something-year-old man with a oh. nose too small for his squished-looking face. <laughs> He had his hands up, he was he was wearing one of my shirts. In fact, inside of the crawl-in closet were a number of my mom and I's belongings, mostly clothing. The whole closet smelled like piss, which begged the question how long he'd been there. Since there was no visible damage in the house other so than piss stains, was he but several of our belongings were found in his possession, he was charged with third-degree burglary. Somehow that's it. My mom and I obviously didn't want any of the clothes that gross creep wore back. I blame myself for most likely leaving the side door unlocked one night after taking out the trash. Oh, so you I learned my fault. lesson. Lock the doors. The idea that someone could be in your house, even living in it at any moment because of an unlocked door, should not be taken lightly. That's true. I keep listening to these stories. I keep thinking like somebody is in my house. Because <laughs> sometimes I hear like uh like uh I don't know what it, is. it sounds like like a refrigerator door slamming and I'm it'd be random times during the day. I think it's the vent from the uh 
the temperature difference because sometimes that happen like you hear knocking or like a maybe like a loud like thump or something like that. Sometimes I hear like in my vent, it just it'll be like it'll do like that or it'll be like that not or it just be like a boom like a loud thump because of the temperature temperature difference, especially uh, that happens during the, the winter a lot because I had the heat on had the heat on more in the winter than I have the air on in the summer or spring so that happens but sometimes I'll be here especially like it's late at night if I happen to be awake and uh, I hear a man it sounds like a like a refrigerated door I'm thinking it's the deep freeze I have downstairs and I, I'm going out like, what is that? And I'm going out and nobody's in the house. So I'm like, hey, why is that happening? Like, <laughs> what is, and I'm thinking, like I said, it's the prior event doing that. But I look at every, I look in a crawl space. I know nothing can get in the crawl space because I got a bunch of stuff in front of it. So you had to move all that shit out and then get in the crawl space, close the door. And then all this shit would be out. So obviously, <laughs> and uh, the crawl space is actually clean too. Well, ish. Uh, it was flooding in there a month ago, two months ago, something like that. I had to go in there and fix the goddamn pipe because the pipe just came loose. So I had to go in there and just put it back, and it was no way to tighten it. So I just pretty much bend it in a certain way with my bare hands and my brute strength to bend it. To keep it. No, not not like a metal pipe. I wasn't. I ain't, I ain't that strong. <laughs> just just twist a bit of metal pipe like a blue cage or some shit. But it's like pushing it close to the wall. So because it popped out like this, and the water was just shooting out every every like few minutes. So it kept recycling the same like water because it's an ejector pipe. And then I just put the thing back in the hole like that and pushed and it pushed it closer to the wall. <laughs> so it was in there like that. So when the water forcefully comes out, it won't knock it back this way because I think it was like this. And it, over time it kept hitting, it kept hitting, it kept pushing it down till it came out. So I pushed it further that way. So it's kind of like, like that. And, but, uh, but yeah, ain't nothing in there. Nothing in the, in the, uh, the closet where the thermos is, um, uh, nowhere else really to hide. <laughs> it's you in the garage, but there's no way to get in there unless you went in there when I happened to have the garage door open, which I've heard that happen to people. And I don't go in the garage too often, but I know it's nothing because I was cleaning the garage out like earlier this month. What was it like this? September was the 28th. So that's when my fucking allergy shit started happening. But, um, but yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I, but I always, every time I hear a sound, I'm watching these fucking videos, like, it's a homeless, homeless person in my house. <laughs> not, not even a homeless person. That'd be, I'd actually be fine. <laughs> it's like a murderer <laughs> just waiting for me to slip up to come up and just slice my throat. Like they cutting into a baked ham. <laughs> But yeah, that's 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 always like a scary thing. Someone in your goddamn house, and you don't know it, you start seeing stuff missing. I always look at like my food and like is this food missing? And you know, like I talked to my brother, hey, hey, you been in my refrigerator? <laughs> you been in the refrigerator to eat my food? <laughs> hey, like boy, you got my face. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed up our reaction. And if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that bell. Like you'll know if I upload new videos. Comment down below. Share this video. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.